So this little dog is a 14 year old. It's coming with an abscess, take a look. You see the abscess, you can see the abscess over here? It's like a cheek, cheek abscess. And there might be even an abscess below the eye. And this is from a cornasial tooth. This is one of the main teeth in a dog's mouth. And there's been, there's been a, a problem and there's been bacteria that have entered up the tooth. And we've got an abscess. So when you see a cheek abscess, you've got to remember, and this dog's got pretty advanced dental disease. So we're going to be taking out this uh, this really big tooth, this cornasial tooth in the dog's mouth. Is that the hardest tooth to get out? So that's probably the hardest tooth, and it's the biggest tooth. So, I mean, I've said this before in one of our things, but when hyenas are chewing femurs of giraffes in African in African bush in African game reserves or game parks, it's that tooth. That's the big tooth that crushes. That's that's the, the, the strongest tooth in the mouth. It's the hardest one to get out. It's got three really big roots, and that's why we don't just we don't just pull teeth. We cut the three roots into three separate roots and take them each out separately. So this is called a periosteal elevator. You can see we have various size periosteal elevators. I'll start off with a small one, go to a bigger one. And uh, I'm really just elevating the periosteum above the tooth so I can cut the tooth into pieces. So I've l I'm l just separating the periosteum from the tooth. And so the dog doesn't feel it, I'm using some local anesthetic as well. It's a fun of a small dog, isn't it? For those at home, be glad you can't smell the gas. Farting. So it's got such thick plaque and tart, I just want to see what. So the root has been cut. There's three roots, but I've cut it into two. I've also burned away some of the periosteal um, bone, and now we'll start taking out the roots individually, one by one, after gently elevating them. A lot of the periosteal bone, we're going to gently, just gently go in there and start. Trying to elevate the tooth out. And you can see that it came out beautifully. You can see the root, the tooth root is there as well. It's pretty damaged. There's uh, abnormalities on the root of the tooth, but at least one root has come out absolutely beautifully. And now we're gonna, we'll work on the next two roots. So remember, this is a three rooted tooth. Very small, so many things in the mouth. We've, we've, we've split the root into two again. And now I've got to gently start, start removing the second roots. Just very gently going around the tooth. Well, it's not too exciting at this stage. Maybe I'll let you know when I've loosened it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very, very gently. We just do all these different size elevators. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to someone. Happy birthday to you. So by singing, you can actually put gradual pressure onto a root. And this, you can see that without... Um, Showing sure, a singing, putting pressure on the root, not on the nurse's ears. <laughs> so that's the second root that's come out. We'll have a look, we'll x-ray to see that the roots are completely. And now we'll work on the third one. So you can see there's, uh, you can still see if you, the final root is still there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, we're gonna work on getting it out. Now we'll just drill. We'll be drilling a little bit more mail, so. You, you might be able to see if you take a picture of this, but the tooth is discolored. 
the root is discolored because this is a dead tooth. It was the pulp cavity has been exposed, and we've got we've got some dead. Uh, it's a non-vital tooth. And you can see it's pretty loose, or you might be able to see, but it's already starting to give, give a little bit. It's really important to not break the roots. So we're just trying to elevate our periosteal elevators are sharp. So what happens if you break a root? If you break a root, it's problematic. You want to try and take it out. You don't want to leave a piece of root behind. So that's why we spend about 20 minutes taking out some of these teeth that are that have been that have been abscessed for a long time because I just it's much easier than going in a bit later to take out a broken root. But it's pretty loose now, so we can almost yeah, so you can see it actually I've loosened it so much that I can actually pull it out. I didn't get the complete root, so we're gonna go in and find the rest of it. But it's just a broke, it's, it's, it's a damaged broken root, but we will get it, we will get, we will get it all out. So just like a human dentist, we've got a spray. So what we've got is we've got I've taken out what looks like all the tooth that I could see and loosen. And we'll take an x-ray just to make sure that the tooth is completely out now. What I'm doing now is I'm smoothing out the, the socket so it's nice and smooth so I can close it gent so I can close it well. I'm very happy the socket looks completely empty so visibly I don't see any root but we we might take an extra just to check it. so we've taken out a cornesial we're going to x-ray to make sure there's nothing left but you can see it looks absolutely brilliant there's six stitches we've done a gum flap to close it mm -hmm. we've taken out all the piece of root you can actually um, you can even see some of the oh, I've just dropped a piece of root but that's that's okay you can see some of the Plaque and tart, how thick it was on this tooth. So this dog's going to be a very happy dog at the end of all of this. Okay, so this is just a scale and polish part of the mouth. Well, not really just. This dog's needs. This dog's got multiple problems in the mouth and needs multiple extractions and a, a whole mouth extra, which showed his massive pathology in this mouth, which we're not doing. It's the first visit. So for now, we'll be taking out some further rotten teeth, some further teeth that are the worst affected. This is the first time this dog's been to a, to a vet in 14 years. So we've got to do as much as we can in one dental. The tartar is just so thick it's hard to scale it off. And you don't want to, ideally you don't, we don't want to scale in one spot for too long because it actually gets quite hot. So that's why there's water flowing the whole time. Remember, I'm not trying to get a perfect mouth. I want a, I want a pain-free, infection-free mouth, and I want to go in my first dental to do as much as I can to improve this dog's um, oral cavity. But it's, it's, it's a little bit like painting a masterpiece. You can take as long as you like, but it's like I've got a limited time. How long have you been under now? We've been under about yeah. half an hour, and I've got the other yeah. side still to do. And you usually like to keep dentals to around an hour, don't you? 
Yeah, so there's no there's no reason not to do two one hour dentals rather than one two hour dental as far as safety and this is called the next thing we do it's uh, it's called subgingival curette curettage. I'm just going under the gum, just cleaning up under the gums here. Change angle. So I go under the gum and just pull. Under the gum, pull. This tooth's got a lot of recession, so this tooth's probably also ready for extraction, but not today. So now that we've cleaned a little bit under the gums, I'm going to try and just rinse under the gums as well. So, as I said, at a limited time, I'm going to finish scaling, I'm going to polish the side, and then we'll do the other side. We, um, as we said, you've got to be really keep, careful to get out the whole tooth out with the root, but when they're really loose like this, um, tooth will just come out. So there's a complete rot, there's a tooth that's pretty damaged. Comes out beautifully. Um, So there's a, there's a really damaged tooth. You can actually see a bit of an abscess on top of the tooth. It's called a peri... Let's just get it clean. It's a periapical abscess. So we've now got three teeth out. Just like with human dentists, it's quite difficult to, to keep, your, keep a good posture when you're doing all these procedures. So for people watching, what's the green string from? So the green string's a really cool thing that we do here that makes a massive difference. The green string, I'll actually, sh the green string is a swab that I put in the back of the throat. And by attaching it to a green string, we can never forget that it's in the back of the throat. It's just really blocking the throat. So, so the idea is, here I'm going to put another one in, so the idea is when I'm spraying and working the back of the throat, even though there's a tube that's actually coming up, Mel, even though there's a tube, I want to protect the tube from, uh, yeah. the side's looking, this, um, what, we can, what you'll see is the side's actually looking pretty good. I mean, if you, comp if you, if you compare it to what we had at the beginning, Looking pretty nice. Much and now we're going to still scale and polish. So we've still got a bit of work to go. Now. So many of you watching this will have had your own teeth. You would have been to the dentist yourself and you would have you would have probably had dental polishing. It's pretty much the same. It's a bit like painting. We want to try and smooth the teeth as much as possible. Guys, you can see it's not that you can see there's a fair amount of work involved in this. Okay, we're gonna turn him now. Can you do to hold it now, maybe? I know you're taking video. One. One. All right, let's, let's look at the other side and let's see how much we can do. We still got another. And our, our, our dental procedures are an hour. 
as you're watching this video, our dental procedures are one hour and we've done the worst of the cases and we're about 35 minutes in, so we've still got a lot of work on the other side. The cost of this particular dental procedure is about, about $800 for the actual procedure. So whether you think it's expensive or not is up to you, but it's an anesthetic, it's staff, it's a lot of equipment and a lot of experience. That would be painful and that would be that's infected and painful. Remember one thing, what we want for a dog, the aim of a dog dental is to take away pain and infection. It's not to get a mouthful of teeth. No pain, no infection. They don't need all their teeth. It's much better to save a tooth and get the dog coming back. And he's 14. We, I mean, you know, the owner may not come back for further and for further treatment, so I've got to do as much as I can on this visit to make the absolute best of what I can. What does that feel? That is a really rotten molar tooth. Or, so it's very rotten. I mean, you can just see that. These are the roots you're looking at. This is what's sticking out in the mouth. But look how rotten it is. Can you imagine how painful it is? Mm. It's infected and painful. This pet is so lucky to have this tooth out. This is all, right? Yes. Can I untie? Okay, so this little guy's finished. We've managed to pull out the swab from the back of the throat. We've got a second tooth. We've got a second conasial tooth that looks like there might be an exposure, but we can't do it in this dental. You might be able to see it looks like we've got pulp exposure here, but there's only so much you can do in an hour. Um, whether the pet will come back, we don't know, but we've taken out the five worst affected teeth. We've scaled and polished, we've cleaned the gums, we've flushed the mouth, and this little guy will be 85 to 90 percent better, which is which is which is a lot. Mm. And even if he never has another dental, he'll be a different dog in three days. He's had an antibiotic, he's had some pain relief, and uh, he worked out we're very, very happy with the outcome. <laughs>